Let us now take the next model from simple and compound interest where we are going to discuss a very interesting question. Generally, in case of compound interest, we have learned in the beginning of the session that the interest changes every year and that happens because the principal changes every year. Why? Because the new principal will always be the previous year's interest plus the previous year's principal. For example, the principal of second year will be principal of first year plus interest earned in first year. The principal of fourth year will be principal of third year plus the interest earned in third year. So this is the basic concept that we have learned in the beginning of the session that how does the principal change in case of a compound interest. Now in general, the principal changes at the end of each year. Why? Because compounding is done on a yearly basis. But in some special cases, the compounding is done on half yearly basis or quarterly basis. That means in case of half yearly compounding, the interest is calculated at the end of every half a year or at the end of six months. And if the interest is calculated after every six months, it is obvious that the principal also changes after every six months. Why? Because it is a compounding procedure. As in when the interest is calculated, it has to be compounded to the principal amount. So in case of half yearly compounding, the principal changes after every six months. Similarly, in case of quarterly compounding, we understand that a quarter is nothing but one fourth of a year. That is three months. So in case of quarterly compounding, the interest is calculated at the end of every three months. And as the interest is calculated after every three months, the principal also has to change after every three months. So how to find out the total compound interest or the total amount in case of half yearly compounding or quarterly compounding? Or similarly, there is one more case which is called biennially compounding. Biennial means for a period of two years. So in case of biennially compounding, the interest is calculated after every two years. So the principal will change only after two years, but not after every year. So let us understand how to do calculations related to compound interest or the total amount in these special cases with the help of a simple example. Let's say that the principal amount is rupees 10,000, the time period is 2 years and the rate of interest is 20% per annum. So for a yearly compounding, that means when the interest is calculated after every 1 year and the principal also changes after every 1 year, that is the general case. So generally in case of yearly compounding, we can directly use the formula that is Compound interest equals to P of 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of T minus 1. And the amount can be calculated as P of 1 plus R by 100 whole power T. Or in order to avoid the lengthy procedure, we have understood one more concept that is effective or net percentage A plus B plus AB by 100. So in case of yearly compounding, the three values can be substituted in the formula or we can use net or effective percentage to get the required answer. But what to do in case of half yearly compounding? Remember friends, whatever be the type of compounding, whether it is half yearly, quarterly or biennially, the formula remains the same. Compound interest will always be P into 1 plus R by 100 whole power of T minus 1. And amount will always be P into 1 plus R by 100 whole power of T. But the way we substitute the values will be changing a bit in each of these cases. So let us understand what may be the values in case of half yearly compounding. Now the first point here is what will be the principle for half yearly compounding? Friends, whether the compounding is done half yearly or quarterly or biennially, the principle is not going to get affected. Why? Because principal amount is the amount which has been borrowed. So it is no way related to whether it is half yearly compounding or quarterly compounding. So principal remains same. That is it will be equal to 10,000 even in case of half yearly compounding. Now coming to time, the total time given here is 2 years. So for a yearly compounding, T will be equal to 2. That means 2 periods where each period is equal to 1 year. But when we go for half yearly compounding, half a year is equal to 6 months. And we know that in a span of 2 years, we get 4 6 months. Or we can say that there are 4 half years in a total span of 2 years. That means here the time that we substitute in the formula should be equal to 4 four periods where each period is equal to six months. So this is four into six months which is equal to two years. And coming to rate of interest, it is equal to 20% per annum. So for yearly compounding, R should be equal to 20. That is 20% for one year. But since this is a half yearly compounding, R should be taken as 10% only. Why? Because for one year if it is 20%, for half a year the interest generated will be only 10%. So R here should be taken as 
टेन परसेंट दिस इज टेन परसेंट पर पीरियड वेर द पीरियड इज इक्वल टू सिक्स मंथ सो विद हेल्प ऑफ दीज थ्री वैल्यूज वी कैन सब्सिट्यूट इन द फॉर्मूला इन गेट द रिक्वायर्ड आंसर दैट इज आई द कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट और द अमाउंट न कमिंग टू क्वार्टरली कैलकुलेशन अगेन द प्रिंसिपल डजेंट गेट एफेक्टेड इट विल बी इक्वल टू रुपीज टेन थाउजेंड एज इट इज नो वे रिलेटेड टू द टाइप ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग only the time period and the rate of interest would change so the time period here will be equal to 8 8 periods why because one quarter is equal to 3 months and in a span of 2 years we get 8 quarters one year has got 4 quarters so 2 years will have 2 into 4 that is 8 quarters so the time that will be used in the formula should be 8 periods where each period is 3 months or one quarter and coming to rate of interest the given rate of interest is 20% per annum that means for one whole year the interest generated would be 20% so for only a quarter of a year or for only 3 months the interest generated would be just 5% 5% per period where a period is equal to one quarter or 3 months so by substituting these three values in the formula we can get the required answer and let us now look at what happens in case of a biennially calculation as discussed in the previous two cases principal would remain same 10000 as it is but the time period and rate of interest would be changing in this case the time period here will be equal to only one period why because the total time given in the question is 2 years and since it is a biennial calculation one period will be equal to 2 years so this whole span has got only one period of a biennial calculation that is the reason time should be taken as only one year and coming to rate of interest we get 20% per annum in general 20% per year but since this is biennial calculation it should be taken for two years together so if it is 20% for one year for two years it would be 40% so r should be taken as 40% remember friends this is not 40% per annum this is 40% per period that is a period is equal to 2 years so 40% per period and only one period here we have 5% per period where a period is equal to one quarter and we have eight quarters or eight periods here we have 10% per period where a period is equal to half a year and total we have got four periods because the total time is given as 2 years So this is how, based on the given time period and the rate of interest. Generally, the given time period would be in years, and the rate of interest would be percentage per annum. So based on these values, we need to decide what will be the T and R that has to be substituted in the formula or the net or effective percentage concept to find out the answer for various types of compounding. It is half yearly or quarterly or biennial. So now, with these values, we can find out the required answers. let us now take an example based on the various types of compounding that we have just understood the question here is a sum of rupees 40000 is invested for 18 months at 20% per annum on compound interest if the interest is compounded half yearly what will be the interest to be paid so we need to find out what will be the interest that has to be paid at the end of 18 months and as given in the question a sum of rupees 40000 is invested so very clearly the principal is equal to 40000 for a time period of 18 months so the time here is 18 months at 20% per annum so the rate of interest is 20% per annum and this is on a compound interest basis and it is also mentioned that the interest is compounded half yearly so what will be the total interest that has to be paid so as given in the question the principal is equal to 40000 time period is 18 months and the rate of interest is 20% per annum and we need to find out what will be the total compound interest we know that the formula for compound interest is t of 1 plus r by 100 whole to the power of t minus 1 so by substituting these values in proper format in the formula we get the required answer and we have very well understood that for a half yearly compounding or any other type of compounding other than yearly compounding we need to change the values that we substitute the formula remains same only the values of t and r would change so let us first understand what would be the values for half yearly compounding as discussed earlier the principal will not get affected due to different types of compounding it is only the amount that has been borrowed so it is no way related to whether we do half yearly compounding or quarterly compounding or yearly compounding so principal should be 40000 as it is 
the given time period is 18 months and since the compounding is done on a half yearly basis we need to understand in this total span of 18 months how many times do we get half years or how many times do we get six months so very clearly 18 months here is equal to three six months or three half years so we can say that the time that has to be used in the calculation should be three this is three periods where each period is equal to six months and the given rate of interest is 20% per annum that means 20% for one year but since this is a half yearly compounding the rate of interest that we need to use should be only 10% 10% per period where each period is six months so these are the three values that have to be used in finding out the answer now either we can use the formula of compound interest to get the answer or otherwise we can go by the concept of percentages that we have understood in model number two and as we know that finding out the answer with the help of percentage is faster when compared to the formula let us try to do that we know that the rate of interest is 10 percent and there are three periods so altogether we have got three 10 percentages here and we need to find out the effective percentage that would be equal to the compound interest so applying the formula for first two percentages we get 10 plus 10 plus 10 into 10 by 100 so zeros anyway get cancelled we have 10 plus 10 20 plus 1 21 percent now with this 21 percent and the left out 10 percent we again need to apply a plus b plus a b by 100 percent to find out the overall compound interest so the net or effective percentage would be 21 plus 10 plus 21 into 10 by 100 so zero gets cancelled and 21 by 10 would be 2.1 so 21 plus 10 31 31 plus 2.1 is 33.1 so very clearly the overall or the effective percentage for all these three values here would be 33.1 percent so we can say that the compound interest that is generated here in the span of 18 months would be 33.1 percent and that has to be calculated as the question says what will be the interest that has to be paid so we know that the principal here is 40,000 so we can say 100 percent is equivalent to 40,000 rupees and we need to find out the compound interest which we have calculated as 33.1 percent is equal to what by cross multiplication we get the required answer so we can say that the compound interest here would be equal to 33.1 into 40,000 divided by 100 and by doing the calculations we get the answer as 33.1 into 400 that would be equal to 13,240 rupees. So the final answer here is 13,240.